Hello friends, in this video I'm going to share with you 6 powerful one-liners that you might need in particular cases when building modern web apps and websites. Let me show you what I mean. So our first one-liner is going to be shuffling an array. Well, one-liner simply means that a function fits into one line and does something useful. In case of shuffling an array, it actually has many interesting use cases. For example, imagine you're building some kind of an online game and you want every participant to have a random set of cards in their hands. So for this, we can simply create a function called shuffle array, which is going to accept an array as a parameter, array of numbers, and we call dot sort on this array. And inside the sort function, we supply another function, which is going to have math.random. And this is where our randomization comes from. And we sub subtract 0 0.5 so that we either end up with a number lower than 0 0.5 or higher. If it's lower, we're going to get false. And if it's higher, then we're going to get true because the sort uh, function ex expects a Boolean. If it gets a false one, it's not going to swap the values. If it gets a true, then it's going to swap the values. And let's create an array with just numbers from one to five so that we can test it. We console log it out. We are going to call our shuffle array and pass this testing array, basically a test array in. And let's call it in our terminal, node index.js. And as you can see, we have a new array with shuffled numbers in it. This implementation is quite good. It's a uh, n log of n because we go through the array only once and we already have some shuffled numbers along the way. The next one liner that we have is going to be basically having, if you have an array with duplicate numbers, you can use this function to make this array consist only of unique elements. So for example, if you have an array of one, 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 then let's say two times two and three, four, five, as you can see, we have three times one. So we have two duplicates of one and one duplicate of two. So how can we make this array unique? For this, we are again going to create a one liner. Let's call it get unique. And we um, pass, well, it expects an array again. And we are going to create a new set inside it and pass our array, basically the, the parameter inside the set. But since sets are not arrays, it's, it's, it's a different structure. We need to spread it into an array. And this way we are going to get an array eventually. So in order to test it out, we console log it out again as always, and we call the get unique function and pass our test array in like this. Let's test it out in the console. And as you can see, we now got rid of those extra ones and one extra two. So our array is now only consists, consists of unique elements. The next one liner that we have is kind of fun extra. <laughs> so I don't think you will use it that often in your day to day job, as you would use the first two one liners. For this one is about getting random colors. So the use case just use your imagination for a second. Imagine you have some kind of a website with colorful boxes. And every time you refresh your website, you want those boxes to have random colors. So we can achieve this with using this generate random color which simply is going to return a string, a string that starts with a hash because hex values, basically color values in, in, in hex format starts with hashes. And again, we start with math.random to get this randomization and we multiply it by an integer value of a white color. You can Google this. It's not probably that straightforward to understand it at first but then integer value of a white color is zero X and six F's. And we round it to, to using math.floor so that this string is not too long. And then we call to string and pass the radix value. 
16 is a radix for x values. So the result of this is going to be x, x value. Let's call this random function. First clean, clean the terminal and node index.js. And as you can see, we get our hex value. I think this is some kind of a red color, but I need to verify. In the meantime, let's jump into our next one liner. And it's going to be about clipboards, basically copying values to a clipboard, which pretty much every website and every web app has nowadays, because usually you want you, you want to let your users to be able to copy the values that you have on your website so that they're able to post it somewhere else. For example, if you're a bank website, you usually let your values to copy their bank numbers or basically account numbers to be able to post it somewhere else. And for this, we're going to create a function called copy to clipboard, which accepts text, which the text that you get from your input tag, for example, and you simply copy the value or basically pass the value inside the, your JavaScript to this function. And, and again, we use this navigator clipboard write text. Also, we use this question mark to be to check whether we have clipboard or not. And we pass this text inside write text. This feature is not supported in older browsers. So we have a fallback. For the fallback, you can also use document dot exec command. But as you can see, it already, our VS code already says that it's deprecated. So if you're not targeting old browsers, don't use it. If you are, here's the fallback to copy values to your clipboard. Well, our next one liner has to do something with colors and CSS. It's basically uh, detecting whether the operating system of your user allows dark mode or not, because these preferences come from your operating system like Mac or Windows or, or Linux. For this, we again, create a function called is dark mode. And this function is simply returns simply returns true or false. But we're going to use a window dot match media. And first check whether we have match media, if we do have match media, then we call this value for detecting the dark mode, which is going to be prefers color uh, scheme dark. It's basically tapping into the que media queries in CSS. We can use any media query that we want. And we also use dot matches, which means our media query is activated from CSS. It basically works the same way as you would use your media query in CSS. You can also put max with something something in this match media function. So it's super easy. We simply call this function. And as I said, we're going to get a Boolean. Well, I'm not going to run it in the terminal because you should test it when inside a browser. But if you're curious, definitely give it a go and test it inside your browser and see which color scheme you have by default. And this this is the way you can target your users. And the last one liner is going to be very useful as well. Imagine you're kind of a news website where you have long articles and you want to let your users to be able to scroll to the top. So for this, we're going to create a function called scroll to top, and it's going to accept an element, no, not this element, just a normal element. And we are going to call a function called scroll into view on this element, which accepts an object with properties such as behavior. And we can pass smooth so that it scrolls into this box in a smoothly. And we can also pass block start so that it scrolls into the start of this element and not to the end. So in theory, we can pass the body tag to this function, and it's going to scroll to the very start of the body because we said block start. And the way we get this body is obviously using get element by a tag name, we pass in body, and we take the first element from the returned array. And we call our scroll to top 
function using this body element. And it's simply going to scroll to the top. Special thanks to Tapayote Bose for this cool video idea. And if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing or just watch my next video on 10 cool Docker commands that you will definitely need in your life of a developer. It's here.